Hello, everyone. The topic for today's discussion is fishery resources. See, before we start, fishery resources are represented by populations of animal and plant organisms used by man, especially for human food purposes to produce fish meal for animal husbandry, aquaculture products, as well as crafts and decorations of various kinds, right? Fishery is a kind of industry concerned with catching, processing or selling of fish, crustaceans and shellfish. It is a marketing of edible and marketable fishes. Now, what do we understand from this? First thing you will have to know, fish. This word fish is very much related to consumption purpose. More than anything else, we give importance to fish. We give importance to fishes for the purpose of, for the purpose of consumption for non-vegetarian diet, isn't it? This particular resource is first used for consumption, then for economic need, and then for ecological need. Now see, ecological need means what? You uh, suppose a person is planning to grow lotus or other hydrophytes, right? Then the person will have to keep the pond extremely clean. Now, to keep the pond clean, to keep the pond free of mosquito larva, the uh, person, the fish, uh, the farmer needs to put, needs to uh, culture fish in that particular pond so that they can consume those uh, mosquito eggs and mosquito larva. Correct? That is the, that is the very reason why fish is so very important ecologically as well and of course if and of course we must not skip the mention of their role in keeping or in maintaining ecological balance and have been in maintaining a steady food chain right so fish fishery resources are basically represented by populations of animal and plant organism used by man especially for food purposes, correct? Especially for human food purposes, okay? To produce fish meal for animal husbandry, fish meal is produced for animal husbandry, aquaculture products, as well as crafts and decoration of various kinds, fine? This involves catching, obviously first you will catch, then processing, then selling, right? Yes. Next, see, this is something very, very important. That is the reason why I have uh, prepared handwritten things for you. I have collected these data from various resources and have uh, presented to you in a compact manner. Now, let's see, why do I, why is your ma'am telling it is so very important? Why is it so very indispensable. Let's see. Let's see. Central Inland uh, Fishery Research Institute, you will have to know the names of these particular uh, institutes for one mark questions, right? Culture, uh, Central Inland Capture Fisheries Research Institute, C-I-C-F-R-I, -I. please know the full form of these things and you shouldn't go wrong in the spellings. Central Inland Capture Fishery Research Institute. You will have to learn the correct spelling of this. The, this look at this. Look, this abbreviation will be given to you, correct? See, these abbreviations, all right. These abbreviations will be given to you. You will have to 
write the full form of these words and the location this is located in barakpur in west bengal correct next is central institute of fresh water aquaculture cifa next is central institute of fresh water aquaculture central institute of fresh water aquaculture okay this is located in bhuvaneswar urissa is that fine this is located in bhuvaneswar urissa the first one first one was in west bengal then the second one is in urissa okay the third is central marine fishery research institute cmfri where is it this one you will have to find out i won't say okay this one is a homework for you you can say i will not tell you where is it actually located you will have to find it out yourself two things ma'am has done third one you will have to do this one you find out where is it located is that clear now why culture fish why do you actually need to culture fish this is important see everything everything that we do has got a particular purpose isn't it so why why are we culturing fish they do not spend much energy on temperature regulation as they are poikilothermic in nature very very important these are poikilothermic organisms okay they do not spend much energy on temperature regulation they don't need to regulate their body temperature all right they don't need to regulate their body temperature since they are poikilothermic in nature second is what they can convert food into body tissue more efficiently than any other farm animals correct they can convert food into body tissue which is very important okay why do we why do we actually eat we eat so that it gets assimilated and we get energy right they can convert food into body tissue more efficiently than any other organism or any other farm animal okay fish is a prolific breeder with high fecundity what is fecundation and fecundity what is the meaning of this term hmm? what do you understand by this term prolific it's a prolific breeder with high fecundity what is fecundation or what is fecundity what is a prolific breeder what do you understand by this term prolific breeder fecundity fecundation all these they reproduce very fast they proliferate very fast fish production can be organized accordingly to the market demand in respect of quality quantity size color preservation and processing each of these points each one has to be taken care of first is quality then quantity how much is required what is the quality of this particular breed then you take a note of size color preservation and finally processing all these has have to be taken care of before you are selling it fine there is always a certainty of getting a rich haul from culturable waters than from natural resources this is obvious you know this is very obvious 
that there is always a certainty of getting a rich haul from culturable waters because you are you are culturing it isn't it you are culturing it over there so it will definitely be more than in than that you get from natural resources fine now see fishing is one of those activities that includes ecological which is about uh, populations and aquatic ecosystem socio economic that includes those working in the sector technological that is boats these things see boats motors tools all these and consequently political and administrative concern fine if we just uh, try to figure it out in a very simple uh, statement we can say fishing is one of those human activities that includes ecological socio economic technological and consequently political and administrative concerns right now see organic resources are the same limited resources as mineral resources nothing to be very like it's very common you know organic resources are the same limited resources as mineral resources fine if we exhausted the mineral resources mineral resources will run out if mineral resources are see no one is every day sitting and producing resources isn't it no one is doing that if this resource gets exhausted it is gone it is gone forever but as organic resources have productive mechanism and differ from mineral resources we can make the best use of organic resources for permanent utilization by applying their productive mechanism all right organic resources can be used very wisely we can make the best use of organic resources for permanent utilization how will it be done by applying their uh, reproductive mechanism reproductive when you are applying the reproductive mechanism it means what it is not going to perish right the race will will be maintained generation after generation it is not going to perish you understand two major issues are of importance when considering sustainable development and environmental conservation with respect to fisheries hmm. what are those two major uh, point of concern the two major issues what are they first is first one is the characterization and assessment of first one is the characterization and assessment of the present state of living aquatic resources and their environment right then comes the various technical interventions the various technical interventions relevant to the sustainable use the technical interventions related uh, related or relevant to the sustainable use of fishery resources and the protection of the aquatic environment okay now see now we will talk about the different types basically see there are two types to it first is captured fishery the second is cultured fishery 
in captured fishery sea it aims at the management and capture of fishes from the hill stream rivers lakes estuaries and seas now what do you understand by the term estuary what is estuary you know what is a stream what are rivers lakes seas all those stuff you know what is this estuary all about these are not completely saline that means you will not get brackish water here you will get a mixture it's like a transition thing you will get brackish water as well as fresh water this is found near the deltic regions right this is found near the deltic regions then you have culture fishery it includes the practice of rearing fishes in small impounded water such as ponds jeels small tanks etc you understand what is impounded water yes the fishes are reared and bred on scientific lines now what is the scientific lines Yeah, of course these are all uh, scientific procedures and all but what is the scientific line scientific lines means what you will you will inject hormones for better breeding and growth all those uh, pituitary hormones those are injected to the fish before they are uh, cultured and, and and at certain points of time they are given medicines they are given particular injections those are together classified as breeding on scientific lines okay and these are done so that they attain a desired length or size quickly see apply your common sense when you are going to buy a fish from buy fish from the market what are uh, what are the qualities that you are going to look for it should be fresh it should be uh, tasty it should be big it should have all the all 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 those required quality people who consume fish in their day to day life will understand better mm, um, this is a bit uh, weird for vegetarian people you might not understand but your friends who all are consuming fish in their day to day life they know it better you can ask them fine when they reach the desire uh, now you will look for all these qualities right you will look for its length size freshness color and and all those uh, stuff now to attain to get all these what is done scientific methods are implemented fine when they reach the desired length and weight they are captured and marketed see this lovely picture this picture gives you an idea about types of fisheries how are they collected how are they bred uh, so not bred how are they collected and taken for processing and market okay now see depending upon the habitat inland fishery can be now see depending on the habitat you can again see certain classification depending on the habitat you have inland fishery and marine fishery fine it is if i if i just write it like this depending upon the habitat see inland marine okay here we are going to talk about inland fishery inland fish production freshwater fishery the aim is to culture fish 
in small impoundments and to exploit fish resources from the great river systems of the country and from the vast networks of irrigation canals lakes tanks and reservoirs all right so fresh water fishery involves these things the aim here is to culture fish where in impoundments impounded water impoundments and to exploit fish resources from the rivers from rivers then from vast networks of uh, networks of irrigation canals lakes tanks reservoirs all these okay now let's learn a few examples if you are talking about carp you have rohu katla if you are talking about catfishes you have mistis and if you are talking about jewel fish you have anabas okay now see inland fishery can be i said inland fishery fishery can be subdivided into two classes one is your fresh water fishery and the other is your brackish water fishery correct one is fresh water fishery the other is brackish water fishery right it includes culture and exploitation of fishes from different bheris in the coastal regions okay bheris are water bodies where uh, these fish are cultured hmm. from different bheris in the coastal regions estuaries and brackish water ponds and the jhils of the deltic regions okay example is hilsa this is a very good example brackish water means what it is not fresh salty fine so definitely it will it is something related to these uh, coastal regions estuaries brackish water deltic regions and all okay now see look at this fish is it looking pretty <laughs> the combination of population growth and efforts to raise living standards has actually created stress on financial physical and human resources for developing countries give it a thought look at this line how important it is how important is it why are we breaking our heads with all these things what is the purpose the sole purpose is what the sole purpose is to feed the growing population to feed the surging population the sole purpose behind this is just to feed the ever growing population the combination of population growth and efforts to raise living standards has created stress on financial physical and human resources see always remember one thing resource is constant the more you exploit it the more you waste it the less it becomes every day every moment if you are wasting resources if you are overusing resources it will become less less and less every day so if the population is growing in leaps and bounds then what is actually happening tell me you have an idea what is actually happening if if the population is growing in leaps and bounds what is actually happening
the resource is constant, the consumers are increasing. As a result, what is happening? Resource is becoming less. So, there is a constant struggle to get the best. And that is the very reason why we are looking forward to all these techniques. It has often exacerbated poverty and triggered migration to coastal areas. This has led to overfishing and partly, partly through the introduction of inappropriate technology contributed to the degradation of the environment. See, too much of anything is harmful, destructive. Same thing applies to this as well. If we are constantly over exploiting or overusing something, what will happen? What will actually happen? This will worsen the situation Exacerbated poverty means what? Poverty was enhanced. It was made worse. Right? It was made worse and triggered migration to coastal areas. With time, the situation became worse and people had to migrate to the coastal regions. This led to overfishing. See, when you go, go to a particular place, you'll have to eat also. You cannot just fast in that place. So when you are going to the coastal regions, it means what you will do fishing, right? So this led to overfishing and partly through the introduction of inappropriate technology contributed to greater degradation. That's all. Now see, lakes and rivers have also been altered by human activities, which is very, very important. How do you think they are altered by human activity? What not have we done to nature? We are simply destroying nature for our own selfish needs, right? We dump garbage into the river, we dump garbage into the pond. All these are extremely, extremely deteriorating for the life that lives, for the life that is there in the lakes, rivers, and ponds. Nearly always with negative consequences for fishery, the alterations that we have done is basically of no good. Rarely it is of some good or something beneficial. For most of the times, it is for something bad. See, when you are dumping garbage into the pond, what good are you doing? Isn't it? What good are you actually doing? You are doing no good. You are actually destroying it. Isn't it? The water quality falls. Water quality becomes a major concern in aquaculture. Because see, this, this particular, this water quality, this water quality becomes poor. Becomes toxic. Freshwater fisheries are adversely affected by the lowering of lake levels and drainage of wetlands. Drainage system has to be very good, isn't it? Drainage system has to be good. The water has to be uh, good quality water with no, uh, with no toxicity, with no dirt. But very unfortunately, we don't maintain this or rarely do we.
So what is it actually? Let's uh, go through it. Freshwater fisheries are adversely affected by the lowering of lake levels and drainage of wetlands and by extraction, siltation and construction of dams and regulation of rivers for navigation and food prevention, uh, flood prevention. See, all these technologies are, we all know these are must, very important. But to take care of this, we are also, we are harming these things. We are harming, we are destroying these fish. These organisms get highly affected, right? Coastal ecosystems such as estuaries, uh, marshes, uh, shallow bays, and wetlands, mangroves, coral reefs, and seagrass beds play a major role in the life cycles of many economically important fish species by providing breeding, breeding, nursery, and feeding grounds. Okay. About 95% of the world's marine production originates from coastal ecosystem. See, majority is from the coast. See, majority is from the coast. Can you see this? The life cycles of many economically important fish species have come from the coastal region. Their accelerated degradation by land reclamation, drainage, coastal construction, and other competing uses now pose a serious threat to marine fisheries, which is very sad. Now coming to marine fishery. Hmm, what is this? Exploitation of fishes and other organisms of the sea comes under the class of marine fishery, right? Marine fishery can also be classified into two types, okay? One is coastal fishery, the other is offshore deep sea fishery. What is coastal fishery? India has two main seas, the Bay of Bengal and Arabian Sea. Where is this Bay of Bengal? Bay of Bengal is to the east and Arabian Sea is to the west. Okay, the Coromandel Coast offers lower fish production than Malabar Coast. This is because the orientation, this is because of the continental shelf, the span, the dimension of the continental shelf. The continental shelf is broader and southwest monsoon is longer and stronger. Okay. Examples are rays, sharks, sardines, all these. Please remember the names of these fish, okay? Then coming to offshore deep sea fishery, the area beyond the continental shelf is the expansive sea, which is rich in various kinds of fishes. Fine. The area beyond the continental shelf is the expansive sea. It is the expansive sea, which is rich in various kinds of fishes. Right? The most profitable depth is 37 meters and catches are better during the day. Please look carefully into each of the words that I am telling you. In India, rivers, in India, rivers are flowing over 17,000 miles and other subsidiary water bodies. Okay, other subsidiary water bodies cover more than 70,000 miles. So there is no shortage, it seems, isn't it? 
export fishery. 10 lakh tons, this is this figure was studied in the year 2013-14. 10 lakh tons, export fishery, 10 lakh tons. Can you imagine the figure? In India, the importance of developing fishery resource is realized in recent years. The huge marine resource is not being fully exploited. See, we should always take from where it is more. There is no point in taking away from where it is less, isn't it? In India, the importance of developing fishery resources realized in recent years. The huge marine resource is not being fully exploited, right? For popularizing fish farming in tanks and ponds, the government sponsors fish farmers development agencies, FFDAs, fish farmers development agencies. Now, about 147 of these are working, right? During the seventh plan, the government has also set up fisheries, industrial estates, which supply all the necessary inputs like nets, boats, spare parts, etc., and also provide landing centers. Largest producer of fish is West Bengal. This is a very important line to be noted. The largest producer of fish is West Bengal. Right? Fish can again be like, this is just for your knowledge. Fish can be classified into two types. Osteichthys and chondriechthys. Osteichthys are what? Bony fishes. Hmm? You must have heard of this word, no? Osteoporosis. It's related to bone. And chondriechthys is cartilaginous fishes. Can you name one bony fish and one cartilaginous fish? Don't tell me, ma'am, I don't know. These are taught in your PU. Right? In class 9, 10 standards. Hmm? Bony fish is what? Rohu, Katla, all these. Hilsa. And what is cartilaginous fish? Shark, right. Now see. Read these at your leisure when you are going through these lectures. Read this. We need more patrol boats. Stop overfishing. No trawling here. Down with cyanide fishing. Read these. You will understand how much we interfere in their life. You will definitely understand how bad we have made the situation for them. You will definitely understand how worse we have made it for them. Right? 80% of the world's wild caught fisheries are fully exploited, over exploited or depleted. So this is how we come to the end of our discussion. Thank you so much for attending the lecture. If you have any doubts and confusions anywhere, please feel free to get back to me and I'll try my best to solve it out for you. Okay. Thank you. Have a nice time. Bye-bye.